All right, welcome to episode 188 of Artcasters, the show where we talk about the ins and outs of cartooning, illustration, graphic design, just basically. Ooh, I didn't mute my. Thing. I'm here to. I'm here to echo. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I sounded like the devil for a second. <laughs> Possession. So, uh, so yeah, um, but uh, so this is the show where we talk about like professional. Uh, graphic design and illustration and just kind of work on art and uh and hang out um and so as usual i'll just make a round and kind of introduce everybody so uh you're on my channel uh you know where to find me and if you haven't yet click subscribe and hit that little bell and if you're ever bored and want to read a cool comic about faith and mental illness that's handwritten, hand lettered, and hand inked. You can go to quarterlystories.com. So that's that's my stuff. Uh, Scott, as usual, uh, um, where where can everybody find you? You can find me. Uh, Cirkworks pretty much most places on the internet. Uh, Cirkworks on YouTube. Cirkworks on Instagram. Cirkworks on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, also uh, my website, if you go to cirqueworks.com, if you are somebody who wants to make comics or is making comics and wants some tools to do that, you can uh, pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's free. Uh, you just sign up for the mailing list. Uh, and in, in doing so, you also get some cool stuff from that as, as those uh, email newsletters come out. But basically, the Comic Maker Starter Kit has templates and brushes and fonts and uh, pretty much everything you need to start making comics so okay and how much was it again scott it, it is totally free okay <laughs> i was just kind of curious that's unbelievable um all right so uh yeah what a deal i know <laughs> it's crazy you guys act now so um so this other fellow who's uh who's speaking is uh our special guest good friend of mine uh chris kawagua um and chris is joining us he's a cartoonist illustrator graphic designer kind of anything art you name it and he's done it um and so chris where can everybody find you hey everyone you can find my stuff at chris kawagiwa.com that's a k-a-w-a-g-i-w-a but to make it easier you can find me on everything else is sketchboy01 um and lately i've been kind of doing a different moniker going with uh, combining with my wife's stuff as kitten rivet so we've been doing a lot of the shows, uh, like conventions and stuff like that, as as our joint team. We make like pins and prints and uh, all sorts of really cute stuff. Our mascots are a cat and a robot, and kind of representing both of our sides. That's kittenrivet.com and on social, it's uh, the same one: K I T and then R I V E T. Nice. The E T? Did I spell it right? Like rivet, you know, like the bull. <laughs> I think it's V E T, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that one always throws me yeah, off. Yeah. Really so it's meant to sound like kitten, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's awesome, though. You guys should check that out. It's um, very cool, and I, I think that'll tie into um, our topic today too, because um, what I I think to me, like you know, I was trying to think of topics we could cover having you on here. Mm -hmm. And I was realizing like one thing that I think we share and a lot of creatives that um, that I hang out with and, and like and stuff share is like this idea of kind of pursuing and making stuff. Um, think of how I worded it. <laughs> but it's like I think the, the gist was like making making stuff focused on your interests. Mm -hmm. um, and I and and I I know that's something you definitely have done and continue to do and kind of double down on. Right. Um, and so I kind of I thought that might be kind of a cool topic to cover because I think a lot of the time um, when people are kind of new to like working professionally in art um, or to like even trying to create like a side hustle or like a thing that they're going to do um, for passion as as an artist. Um, I think that's actually a conclusion a lot of people maybe struggle with coming to like, and then I, I think there's a lot of interesting st stuff that kind of ties into that. So anyhow, so that, mm -hmm. that I hope that's enough to kind of branch off the topic, but like, um, but what, uh, like what kind of, what makes you um, as an artist create work that has to do with your interests mm -hmm. on top of doing 
like, like regular, loads of professional good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which by the way, anybody can check out. Like there's a link to Chris's site and stuff below. So you can check out a lot of his professional work and personal work there. Mm. I think um, it comes pretty naturally, right? Like drawing your interests. I think it's like the, you go through kind of a different phase when you start off early on. Um, it's almost like you go back to, like when you start drawing with crayons and stuff, everybody does this. You draw what you want to draw. Nobody tells you like, what should, you know, no, no kid is going to ask another kid, what should I draw? It's more like you just go in there naturally. And I feel like once you're, when you're trying to build up that career, you're often trying to figure out how to make a buck doing that thing, which is creating things. And then you, you, that one, you kind of go backwards and try to figure out like, well, what is the niche that I can fill? And I remember doing all sorts of really boring, but paying work. And that's kind of how you built up your portfolio. But over years, you kind of just start to wean away the things that you don't want to work on, despite them being, you know, and then you start to kind of get known for a style or like um, just something to be like a, like a calling card. Um, so I feel like you start off drawing interests and then you learn how to adjust to projects that pay. And then you've tried to find both paying projects that are your interests, which is the ideal, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's really easy. and It's, it's going to last you a lot longer because your passion is going to be much more natural if you have an interest that, that you're, you personally are excited about. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also like as a professional, you have to learn how to get excited about certain stuff in order to just do good work. You know, you have to at least fake it, you know, yeah. <laughs> during the initial meetings and to let people know like, yeah, I'm, I'm the person for this job just so you can do it. And that's like, that has to do with your professional ability. And then uh, you're, you're kind of honing that over time by deciding what to add to your portfolio, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So like, um, Scott, like, what about you? Like what, um, what kind of makes you gear yourself to like pursuing like, um, you know, art that's based on your own interests on top of doing art based on the interests of like clients and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, kind of like Chris, I mean, I think it's, it's, you, you start off kind of having to pay, pay your dues and just kind of do kind of whatever you can get your, your, your hands on. And then, uh, and also, you know, interests change. I mean, the, the, I, I think in, I think throughout most of my career, like I said, in the beginning, you, you're still, you're just kind of like, I'll do whatever. But, um, you know, for most of my career, I've tried to kind of focus on doing the kind of work that, that interests me, but what interests me back, you know, I'm dating myself, but 20 years ago, isn't necessarily <laughs> the same stuff that, that interests me now. Yeah. Um, so, you know that can kind of change but I, I think i think it's just a matter of at least once you reach a certain level put it just whatever you're putting out there i think hopefully that's the kind of work that people are hiring you to do now there's always going to be people and again this is sort of a kind of where you're at in your career where you know if you're a little further along you don't always take this kind of stuff but there's there's always people that just it's it seems like there's a lot of people that just don't know artists. So when they see one, it's like, Oh, you draw, you could do this thing for me. Like I was just at, uh, I was just, I was just at office max. I was getting some, some copies made and I have one of my a character design. And there was a lady that, that you know, said, who, Oh, who drew that? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I guess that would be me. And, and then, and then she starts talking about this like commission or something she wants. That's totally not even the realm of what I would do. And it was <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> and it's like yeah, I don't I don't really do commissions, and yeah. I I mean, not to say that I don't, but and I don't you know, not to judge people. I don't know anything. I mean, this person could have been a millionaire for all I care. Uh -huh. but, but typically, <laughs> typically, just the person that doesn't really understand art, they really don't know what it costs to do art. So I, yeah. mean, I usually just try to avoid that. Yeah, you know. Well, you should be like, I'll throw you 50 bucks. It's yeah, like, right. Can you draw me? Yeah. Can you draw my pet? You know, like, yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. I'm that, you know, but it's like, yeah, I think that's like a immediate reaction to if you can make something and they're like, oh, yeah. you can do this. Yeah. Can you do this yeah. for me? You know, like, and and I, I, to right. be honest, I probably could. I mean, I right. think, and there's, there's, it's weird because there's also the people that, that, that want, that, don't understand that if you can draw one thing, chances are you could probably draw something else. And yes. they're like, yeah, but I need to kind of see it. Like, but 
but yeah, I mean, just look at my portfolio. Look at if you look at this and you look at this, right? Yeah, you put two and two and two together and figure out that I can also do this something mm -hmm. similar to what you're looking yeah. for. So, but it's it's kind of you know it's it's that type of thing. But I always try to you know I try to put out the kind of work that I do, and it's it's weird how it works because. Like this, I've been doing this, if you've been following the 48 hour art check and this project that I'm working on with Corey, that Corey's animated for me, um, it, the, the client, they wanted this kind of old timey, like newsy character, like the old extra, extra read all about it, newspaper kid. Um, and so we did a few different sketches and everything. And, you know, was kind of in that vein. And then, uh, and then just for, you know, shits and giggles, they wanted me to do, you know, like they said, well, we're probably not going to do this, but we know you like to do robots. So just, just give us a robot sketch. And I did. And mm -hmm. that's the one they ended up going with. That's all. And I didn't I know think, that. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. And I think part of that is because I don't, I mean, I, I like to think I put as much effort and as much, you know, in all the character designs that I presented them, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, just because maybe I like to draw robots and that's kind of, that's the one they gravitated to and they really loved it. And mm -hmm. it was a little different from the other stuff. It wasn't right. typical what they were even expecting. So sometimes that happens. The more stuff you put out there, the more, you know, people will go to you for a certain type of work. So, yeah. Yeah. And I remember pretty vividly like early on in my career like really getting very frustrated with getting like the same old educational art and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then i realized like that's all i had on my site and like I, I i had other stuff on my site but it was like split it was like presenting a split image of like a bunch of work i didn't want to do mm -hmm. with a bunch of work i did want to do and i you know I, we've mentioned this advice before but it's like i think some of that comes with like as you're working on this stuff and I think a lot of it kind of almost has to be like on top of just the professional stuff you got to be making stuff you want to make and you right. want to get paid for because that it, it's like a weird karmic thing where you put it out there and then next thing you know that's what comes back professionally um, or it can actually like even improve like you know um, some of the more corporate stuff can actually get influenced by that stuff because right. it's like, oh, we didn't know you did this. And, and you were interested in this one thing. And they might they might change the direction of what they were thinking. Like, well, yeah. What if we need a hand inked thing, you know? Like that yeah. would be yeah, I think that that makes total sense that you start to stand out from the usual crowd if yeah. you're doing your own personal work because you're naturally presenting a side of yourself that you enjoy showing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think um well we should get, I guess get it and get more into it. So mm -hmm. um so like is like the kitten rivet stuff that you're mm -hmm. doing with Christina like yeah is that like, oh, yeah that's totally <laughs> that's totally just because we like to yeah know? but like so yeah. I think that that's kind of the part that I'm I'm kind of really interested I think mm -hmm. in kind of delving into is like you guys have built this whole well why don't you kind of give the pitch it's, like what it is I mean I can walk through it but I won't do it as well. <laughs> No, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's basically we've been doing conventions for a while. You know, we've done a combination of like craft shows and and uh, small street fairs and stuff like that, but mostly comic conventions. And my wife does her own work, and it's like really cute watercolors, and it has very much her style. And I have my own stuff, and mine is like a mix between my own work, my own personal work, and also some of my my pop culture inspired stuff. And but a lot of it, I guess, they could consider it like sci-fi pop culture. So. We basically made mascots out of our our tastes, um, but yeah, there's definitely no no like uh, corporate philosophy as to what we're doing. It's just that we like drawing or painting what we're putting out there. Yeah, and I think I think it shows because it's like yeah, there's not much more to it than this robot. I want to draw him because I thought he looked cool, and this cat looks really cute. So we just you know if it makes us awe, then hopefully it makes somebody else have the same type of reaction. You know. Yeah, and so like um, so yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. So like even that though, like, it, have you found that to be kind of true? Like, for instance, like if you draw something and you're like, "Ah, eh, this isn't gonna hit," and then you bring it to a convention. I, oh yeah, I mean, I can give you an exact example. Uh, just recently, um, we went to CatCon, which was our first time going to a cat-themed convention. Uh -huh. So just to branch out, and it was fun. It was super cool. We met a bunch of new new people. Some there was some overlap too. People that do go to Comic Con. Um, but we realized we have enough uh, feline-related 
items between us that we could definitely bring something to the table there. Yeah. Um, and I had these ideas for, uh, which is the one that I thought was funny, but people seem to like, but no, but one person bought, and I'm totally fine with that because yeah. I just wanted to exist. And it was the, um, you know, that show Cobra Kai, yeah, on YouTube. So I, my wife, I love that show, and then she came up with an idea of like, of no, no mercy, except not not no mercy, but no meowsy. <laughs> nice. That version of 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 what's his name, Billy? No, uh, is that right? I forget. But um, uh, Johnny, they, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it's a cat version of Johnny, and it's like scratch first, scratch hard, no meowsy, right? <laughs> and I had that out there. I'm like, this is going to debut at, at CatCon, and I'm like, people are going to love this. And it and it got a lot of attention. Like, it was just there, and people were totally chuckling as they stopped by the table. But they would either not get it or get something else entirely, which is really funny. Some of the stuff that people are interested in almost like as a as a funny thing that gets their attention, but they might stay for stay and actually buy something else. Yeah. So, um, but I have no regrets making that because I, I just thought it was so funny. I mean, I enjoyed sharing that joke with people, you know, and genuinely. Like it's. Yeah. Um, and we did all right, so it's not like it was a total loss. It was. It was total. It was a good show, um, especially for first time being there. But um, yeah, that's an example of something that I, I didn't rely on too heavily because I only brought like three copies that are printed at home. Yeah. So it's not like I was I was like overstocking or anything, um, and other stuff sold. But it was it was definitely one of those things that like, clearly, I, I it's, it only exists because I thought we thought it was funny. Yeah. To share with people, and it's a genuine reaction, you know. So I that actually I don't know. I mean, it's I, I'm sure we have a ton more about interest and stuff, but I feel mm -hmm. like all of these things are in a world, of, and and I relate to that entirely. Like. Um, this is like back Chris and I used to live really close to each other and we were the like, <laughs> like his now wife and, and my wife like would go to work and we oh, would right. freelance <laughs> yeah. and just be either like, well, I'm going to hang out at home and freelance or do you want to come over and just hang out and freelance? <laughs> yeah. We could still do some work and yeah. still stay motivated. It was, it worked it very yeah. much for the time it worked. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, so, at the time we were both doing kind of the t-shirt hustle and mm -hmm. um, like, so we'd have these nights where we were concepting, like just filling sheets with like stupid jokes, mm -hmm. like, and trying to kind of find like good concepts and stuff. But I do remember um, one of those nights and I, th I think you were involved in this, but it was like, mm -hmm. I just started coming up with really bad, presidential pun oh, yeah. and, <laughs> right right and then i was just like yeah. i'm just gonna do like stupid portrait puns for like a month and yeah. see what happens yeah and you your abraham lincoln you had your yeah church hill yeah they were so right. bad yeah <laughs> but you enjoy yeah i totally could tell that some of these you're just kind of like you know just sh shooting the breeze and coming up with silly ideas and then a couple of these are like you know what i'm gonna actually do it i'm gonna i'm gonna make one yeah and, <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's always really fun to see come to life you know yeah and i think like one of the cool things about that is like a byproduct is like quite a few of them like did okay and like mm -hmm. and and sold and like the, the the thing is like um there's a lot that i did that i like i really expected to land dead but i just mm -hmm. did them because it would be funny and and it just seemed like a weird kind of interesting challenge so it was like my own interest and yet it kind of led to some cool stuff and like some products that like actually hit for some people mm -hmm. and then a, a whole bunch that like i still to this day if i saw like one print i'm like woohoo right so like cares about the like the churchill one yeah <laughs> right <laughs> that, it's a very <laughs> specific market of someone who likes british history yeah. and likes really silly visual puns but if anything though you know if you do see somebody actually wearing that that, that guy's like a good buddy you know what i mean like they immediately they yeah. get your case so there's I, I think there's always something positive to take it out like well this person really likes my joke you know yeah and oftentimes i mean it makes me think whether if you find the people that do like something so specific that maybe that's the type of audience that you want to have like a core fan base out of because I think it's like the idea that that I forget what what the number was, but in order to have like a sustainable, viable business, you just have to have this many dedicated like fans, thousand true right? Followers, like super whatever. true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's that not specific that person per se, but that type of person who gets your humor so specifically that they might be the type of person that likes 
that w that could be a candidate for that type of fandom, you know? Yeah, and I think that's kind of, I don't know, like at least for me, that was kind of the thinking behind it. But I've also seen, I've seen you do similar things where you'll do like a, a Star Wars joke that mm -hmm. you'll like post um, and it'll be like a joke that I know you think think is funny and i think is funny <laughs> but not everybody's yeah i clearly I have no idea if it'll hit and then yeah. sometimes it does and uh -huh. what i think is kind of cool about that is like watching that happen because i know you didn't do it just to pander i know you did it because you're like a complete star wars person. right yeah unabashedly so yeah for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i'm and, still working on those they're just super fun to do just because like it tickles me to, to come up with them and then to have somebody else enjoy that i guess it's like the closest thing to being a comedian, you know, visually, you could draw out a joke or a yeah. pun, and then if somebody else enjoys it, that 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 humor and that moment of connections there, you know. Yeah, and and Scott, like you, you do this a lot too. Like you'll have like a a, a kind of bad joke <laughs> about you know regarding like science, and it'll be like a riff on a B movie poster, and mm -hmm. um, like so, what motivates you kind of making those things? Um, and then like, are you kind of like, are some of those being made? I mean, obviously you want people to like your stuff and, and whatnot, but is, is there a part of that that's just like purely for your own amusement? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. One thing, one thing that I do, kind of like what you were talking about, just throwing out, you know, just different puns and ideas and things, but any, you know, for me, a lot of those, especially the humorous stuff, it's just stuff that pops up or I hear something and even if it's in a conversation, it's something funny. I'm like, okay, that, that maybe the person that meant that said that never meant that to be like a visual thing. I'm like, what would that look like visually? But anytime, you know, I, I hear something funny or just yeah. anything like that, I'll, you know, open my phone and I'll jot it down in like Evernote or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I've got a list of things that I could draw from. I, I haven't really done pop culture stuff in a while, but yeah, but if I wanted to, and there's there's one that's like halfway done that I keep wanting to do, but I just I just don't focus on that anymore. But it's I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of a funny idea. But I've got I've got just tons of funny ideas that I think would do well as far as T-shirts. But uh -huh. um, they just kind of right now they're just sitting there. Where and then I've got I've got another list that's all kind of science stuff and everything. And so you know, and then I have to kind of determine well. What kind of product is this? If it's just uh, if it's just a funny phrase, then maybe it'll work on a button. If it's just, you know, if it's more if it's more has more of a visual aesthetic to it, then maybe it's a print or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I have all that stuff, and I just kind of keep a, a running tab because if somebody if somebody said to me, okay, uh, be funny, uh, come up with uh, you know ten great T-shirt designs just on the spot, I don't know if necessarily I could do that, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess if I really, really stretched, you know, stretch some of my muscles or whatever I could, I could figure it out, create the muscles, but, um, but it's not that easy. So I, so I just, I just have a, just a big log of all these different ideas that a lot of them I'll never, never probably get to, but, um, but it's all, and most of it's, and some of it, like you said, some of it is things that, oh, this would probably sell really well, but maybe it just doesn't, interests me enough to execute it. So I don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it, and some of the pop culture stuff's kind of like that. Um, and then some of it's like, you know what? I don't know if this is, this will sell well or not, but mm -hmm. I like it. So I'm going to make it. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, exactly. Some of that stuff is like so, for yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, Cause it, all this stuff always going to, it's going to take even the most simplest thing. It's going to take some attention and time and energy. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to kind of make judicious choices about like, where you're going to dedicate to put some time into it, you know? Yeah, that, that's good that you have a list, though. I mean, I feel like I used to be a little bit more organized with it when I was working specifically in these things. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, I really feel like I should. Yeah, I, I, you ever gone back and looked at old sketchbooks and found some ideas in there? You're like, wait, this might actually be OK. And it, it's almost like a testament. Like, well, if it stood up to the test of time of like not having looked at it for a while yeah. and you still think it's good, then you should yeah. probably do it. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, I've. I did that recently. I'm like, oh, you know what? I, I got to finish this, you know? Yeah. Just it, it's there. 
Yeah. And I have done that. I, I have gone back through that list and like, yeah, this isn't really relevant anymore. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Some, some stuff can be totally topical and then yeah. it's like, or yeah. just, or yeah, I'm never going to do this or that's not as funny as I thought it was. And then mm -hmm. sometimes I'll look at some, look back at something and like, wow, that's, that really is a good idea. Why haven't I done anything with that? And I will yeah. like, uh, I forgot where I got the idea. Like some of the, I think, I think the last pop culture thing that I did um, and I noticed the, the Han Solo and Carbonite in back of you, <laughs> but <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. So I, I, the last pop culture thing I did was, um, it was basically Han Solo and he's, he's like flipping the bird. So I guess, you know, he's frozen in Carbonite and he's flipping the bird. And so I did that, that one, I just thought, oh man, this is going to really do well. Um, but, um, so it's on Redbubble or, or whatever you can get it, but I didn't didn't really sell as much right. as I thought it would. But sorry, I just dropped off for a second. Yeah, sorry. I noticed that because it froze when you looked around. Don't look around. Stay where you, you are. Me okay. Yeah. I'm connected. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> the last thing I heard was uh, Han Solo. And yeah. So the, I did a Han Solo and Carbonite, but he's like flipping a double bird. Oh, that's and I think I was listening to a podcast and somebody said, said they just mentioned that on the podcast. I'm like. Like, wait a minute, has anyone done that? Of course, the first yeah. thing you do is Google it to see if anyone's Right, of course. It. Yeah, you always have to Google it. Like, so, so, yeah, I did yeah. that. But it's kind of like That's a weird funny. thing. A lot of times if I do, like, the pop culture stuff, I'll get a T-shirt and I'll wear it. But I, I, don't, I just don't mm -hmm. know how that uh, – the, the other thing is I've, I realized that I can't market that one, like, on Facebook because I guess um, Facebook specifically had a thing saying that you can't do that. You can't. Showing oh, them flipping the bird, so, wow. so, yeah, so that I'm one so kinda, sensitive with these things. My gosh. Yeah, yeah. So, so I couldn't because yeah. I was going to run some Facebook ads on that one. Yeah. But, but anyway, so I did. That was the last one I did. I like the design; it's fun. And depending on where I'm going, I might wear it out. But yeah, um, yeah. But it really got, has to do with the audience, you know. Like, yeah. if, I feel like if you go to the right place, if you can laser focus onto just one specific clientele, there's somebody that will like it. It's just about whether it's worth all that effort, yeah. you know. And, and the thing for me, because it's funny, because I just filled out this Redbubble survey, and, you know, basically my, a lot of my feedback was just, like, they were asking about promotion and all this other stuff, and to me, at least where I'm at, because I, you know, I have some pop culture stuff out there, but I don't really, I don't really try to push anything. I don't do any, make any marketing efforts to push people to the print-on-demand sites, mm -hmm. because... To me, they've got their own audience, so if they can drive in stuff and I get a little, you know, I get a little commission here and there, that's fine. But if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna market stuff, it's gonna be to my website, right? Where, got a much bit, where I'm making a lot more than two or three dollars off a shirt, you know? right? Exactly. You yeah. know? So I mean, to me, if if you know, if they've got an audience, if they if they can market it enough, or if it falls in their algorithms that I can sell stuff on, they're fine. But um, and then who do you focus on? I mean, there's so many print on demand sites. Do you want to, do you spend all your time marketing to design by humans, mm -hmm. Redbubble, T public, right. society six threadless, uh -huh. whatever else. I mean, there's so many of them out there. Yeah. Um, and there's some people that do that and they make, a, I mean, there's people that are making a killing on all those sites, but, um, and, but for me, it's just like, you know, I'd rather just I'd, if I'd rather market people, send people to my own website, and mm -hmm. and I I I sell more stuff on the on the print on demand sites, but like I said, the 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 margin's a lot worse. Right. So, yeah. It's yeah. almost like just passive income that kind of sits over there. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, once in a while I'll kind of forget what I have on places, and I get the email like, oh, so and so has sent you some pocket change, you know? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. oh, I kind of forgot I had that. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. Definitely. Like. I've seen people, you know, successful at it, but you really have to commit to it and put some sweat into it because it takes time to upload and submit yeah. and, and keep track of all those things. Whereas I think if you have your own IP, which is I think the highest level of your own taste that that there can exist, I think it feels different because it's it's completely your own thing, you know. Yeah, and yeah. it is a lot different than when you guys were doing, you know, threadless, where you know if you got a shirt that was a couple grand. I mean, it's not, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's just. That doesn't. I don't think that. I. I think Threadless probably still does that, but or maybe they don't. I don't know. But um, I actually don't know. Yeah. Do you know, Josh? Either, yeah. We haven't. <laughs> yeah, that, that, no, uh, yeah. I mean, we. Yeah. It's so funny because I was so neck deep in that world for a while. Yeah. Um, and then, but, 
Uh, it's not like I don't like it anymore, but I think the 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 highest peak of it has passed. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there's so much of the industry has changed. You know, like it's just like company mergers. I mean, like Redbubble and T Public are the same thing now. Okay. okay. Which I yeah, think that's right. That's right. Yeah. So but it's like still... you, yeah. I feel like so many of these pl places once they realize like this technology exists, it kind of changed the name of the game, and then yeah. uh, all these bigger companies started to realize that there this stuff can exist in in different ecosystems. Yeah. yeah, and I think they're hedging for something that's a little more advantageous for the companies and less so for the artists because it's mm -hmm. like it it's literally just like it it had this brief peak where it wasn't quite what Cafe Press was for a long time where Cafe mm -hmm. Press was just scattershot like you can find anything. It was a little more curated. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like it's gone back to kind of like, well, whatever you want. It's all whatever you want now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, which is really great for the company because i mean i'm sure it ups their C seo or whatever right it's just more products if you type in anything into google it can yeah. on a mug or a print or a water bottle right yeah yeah I, I get that part yeah but for the artist i feel like it it just becomes smaller pieces of the pie yeah so i think that they're they're aiming for i don't know i it seems like they're aiming for smaller successes in larger quantities you know mm -hmm. so, which is kind of the the Walmart strategy or whatever. Yeah, right. So but, um, yeah, I, I want to get back on the humor thing though, because like, Sorry. um, because like with with um, so like, you were talking about sketchbooks and stuff, and I yeah. think that um, like when you're when you're trying to kind of come up with like humor and illustrations, like I think um, like Scott was mentioning, and I think I think you were mentioning too. It's like part of the first litmus test is like, is it, is it actually fun? Like, is it actually making you laugh? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's usually I think would be, I don't know, like what, what for you, what's the process of like trying to kind of troubleshoot that kind of thing? I don't know. Yeah. It's weird, it's no, just, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like, there is know, kind of a science, to like it. a science to humor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It seems like a, yeah, it's almost like a, uh, what do you call that? Um, an oxymoron but but i think there is i think like it, there's an initial emotional chuckle and then they start to share it maybe like this is what i do I'll, like take it to lunch with some coworkers and share and see if what they think <laughs> and and really try to gauge their reactions like are they are they laughing could just to be polite or do they really think it's funny you know yeah um so yeah just basically if, if you think it's funny initially and then sharing it with someone close to you that kind of gets your humor um second and then if there's enough people that that think that genuinely think is like oh it's kind of entertaining then i think it's you know you can kind of gauge whether it's worth it to take it to completion color ink and and print it you know um yeah i, I think it's it's uh there's no real like set system that i would go through it really is just in a, a gut reaction like a feeling yeah i i agree and i think that's one of the things that's a little frustrating about it because it's like if you could hit that vein mm -hmm. <laughs> you could literally just you know make awesome best-selling stuff all the time right right and i guess like what scott was saying is a big thing too it's like if you think it's funny and has it has it ever been done before is the big uh challenge oh. like a pop culture riff you know or even a science one just because it's there's so many people that love these topics um yeah i think that's like another thing that you want to be careful of as a creative is that if you had that that idea somebody also may have had the same same idea yeah. and then if they have then you have to really kind of come up with that judgment of like is this too close or am i yeah, adding but anything what's, new to this? what's hard yeah. is when you see that somebody's done it but they've done it so poorly and it's just like do i want to do it and do it better which i could but they, yeah. they did kind of already come up with the design but it's right. really not that great so do i do that or not you know yeah. that's a good thing i mean i can give an example this is so far long ago um i did the well i guess it's on my business card it's these i still use it this was one of my first star wars licensed t-shirt designs so if you can see it it's the darth vader holding up the death star oh, cool. yeah, right, that's right, right right so i'm like i had a little sketch for it a little thumbnail and then the exact thing happened. I found somebody had done like a really, I mean, it's a novice job, you know, at, at the same idea. And I'm like, oh man, but yeah, and I considered like, should I even do this? But, it's, but it was like such a basic idea that I'm like, I did come up with this idea on my own. Right. And then, uh, and then, well, 
and it did get printed, right? Yeah, and that's uh -huh. that, that's the thing, because I, I just did a video on like fan art versus original art, mm -hmm. and one of the, you know, I, I basically just went kind of through different pros and cons of, right. you know, some of the pros for doing fan art and some of the cons, and one of the cons I said is that if you're doing fan art, I mean, you can't, you don't have any ownership of it, so somebody yeah. could come along and do the same exact thing or do yeah. it better, and there's really nothing you could do about it. Yeah. And but it's case, just an idea, and chances are, idea, if right. it's a clever idea, somebody's probably already thought of it. Whether mm -hmm. they've, whether they've actually executed it, that's a different story too. Right. Because, like I said, that the the Han Solo carbon I flip in the bird, the double bird, mm -hmm. I heard that on a podcast. Yeah. You know, but they just talked it. But they, they just, just mentioned about it. There's that. No visual, but right? there's no visual, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to do it. So, right. but it wasn't an idea that I came up with. But I just, the, I thought that was funny when they said that because it's totally like that seems like something Han Solo would do. I mean, right. Yeah. That's what he should have done to, to yeah. Jabba when the scoundrel, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like it was funny because. In this case, it was what was, was the first opportunity for me to work with like a licensor. So I was working with like somebody yeah. who owned the license to make the shirts. And this other thing was like obviously fan art, but I was like, this was fan art that had the possibility to actually become official merchandise, mm -hmm. which mine did. And that was like my first one, which I was really happy with. Um, but it's almost like if, if I do anything like that, that I don't have permissions with, it's still fair game for anybody official to come with and take that idea and transpose yeah, it on. Sure. And I've seen it happen, you know, like yeah. there's plenty of t-shirt designs that I've totally seen them exist on the fan sites and parody sites and people wear them. And then, you know, like maybe a year later at Target, you find like it's been the, the actual licensor could take that idea and just have their version of it. Yeah. And they can look out where they want, but they went through the right channels. It's like, it's, and it, they're just ideas. It's not like you, you know, like I've, I've never felt that sort of, super ownership i still feel like a fan with when i'm playing in somebody else's sandbox you yeah. know for my for the stuff that i get to do completely on my own i feel like i feel a lot more precious with probably yeah uh, but yeah that, that that happens i think this it just comes with the territory of of working in the creative field you probably yeah. like to have the same sort of ideas once in a while yeah and i i mean something i would definitely let people know is like if you haven't been ripped off yet like if you stay in the game long enough it'll happen. Mm -hmm. like it's uh like, maybe it's like badge of honor you know what i mean yeah. like if somebody thinks your idea is so good that they they've taken it yeah you know, like that means yeah that that means like oh wow that you've gotten to a certain place of of being imitated as a form of flattery i think you know yeah, yeah for sure. I, I just watched if anyone's interested like if anyone is in the position where they're having a lot of their artwork taken mm -hmm. um i just watched this amazing video and it's been around for a while but i've never seen it but it's uh gerald tidwell um mm -hmm. it, if you if you google i think if i don't remember how to spell it but it's gerald tidwell and, and then adventures in design or copyright or something like that um, uh -huh. it's an interview he did up for the podcast adventures in design Basically, he this guy makes more money off of the copyright infringements, people ripping him off and suing them, than he does what? the actual thing. Yeah, and it's, wow. and it's relatively inexpensive, and I can't huh. go through the whole thing, but right. But basically, here's here's just some of the. I mean, we could do a whole podcast on I mean, a whole show on just this, but here's some of the basics. So the basics is because. It, you know, people don't copyright their officially copyright their stuff because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Which you don't need to if you create something that's automatically copyright. Mm -hmm. But in order to fight that in court, it helps right. if you actually register it. You have some. So, but you don't have to. You don't have to copyright everything. You could take everything you did for a year, put it in a book, mm -hmm. and copyright that, and you've got that. And so what he says is that one of the main, main mistakes people make is if they see that somebody's got a T-shirt in a store, mm -hmm. one of the designs is they immediately go to whoever it is and tell them to stop doing it. Right. But it sets it all up because while they're they're selling in the stores, that's more money that you're losing. That's more that money you can get from a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So and and he also says, you know, it's not as expensive as you would think because if you get a good lawyer, they're just taking a percentage. And if you have if you present them with, hey, this is the artwork, I have proof that I did this. And mm -hmm. the other thing he does is he goes and buys the shirts so he has uh -huh. the shirts he tells his friends in different areas to buy it because what they'll what they'll oh, tell wow. you 
what they'll distribution, tell you, right? Yeah. yeah. What they'll tell you is, oh yeah, that was just we just had a couple of them, and we're, yeah, we just sold them off, and, uh -huh. and he'll he has basically sets up all this proof, right? You know, and, and then he the goes case, in yeah. there, and you know, some of these lawsuits he's getting six figures from. So, oh <laughs> so, but it's a it's a really enlightening. I don't have enough of my stuff st stolen, to right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But if you ever get in a position where people are just stealing your stuff, yeah, um. It's it is really interesting, but yeah, I there's know, definitely I kind of like a tangent. <laughs> yeah, but that's something was, entirely was, dedicated. We should like get a lawyer. Best, yeah. It was like one of the best like like podcast interviews I've ever heard. So that sounds pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. fascinating side of of cre of being a creative. You know, yeah. like that type of thing of what is ownership and how to defend what's yours, or you know, like yeah. set up a case like that. Because I I do know know that like you you can even if you you can have a cease and desist type thing and they'll stop it but unless you like you said you've gone through the right channels you don't you can't build a case of recouping what they've already gained out yeah. of it you, monetarily. Yeah. and that's yeah. the, that's the thing that they say it's all damages because mm -hmm. you know cease and desist they can stop doing it but it, they've already run yeah they can run away with a really it good yeah. analogy like if you go into a store and you steal something and yeah. walk off with it and they catch you it's not like you just have to give them give it back, back or right. pay for it no yeah, yeah you get there's there's some consequences in there, so. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I like this as a time i'm kind of interested <laughs> okay, you gotta hit this one uh well i'm just kind of repeating what i what i heard in this awesome video so mm -hmm. I, so far what i've heard and this is a little more down uh, like i uh, like most uh friends of mine who've, who've been through it and stuff like it's usually a loss to sue mm -hmm. um, just in general suing that's what i thought until i listened to this interview so, yeah, I'm gonna check it out because, like, yeah. all I've heard is stories where lawyers get very wealthy. Yeah, and it's kind of like the the you, <laughs> you always think, well, and I even mentioned this on the last video. I was talking to people in the chats and saying, you know, it's pretty much if Disney takes your stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. um, they can they'll just win because they have the lawyers and they ha they can outspend you. But but it's almost better if a big company takes your artwork and is doing stuff with it as long as you as long as you set it up the right way because mm -hmm. and you don't have to really pay these attorneys much because they're just taking a percentage and mm -hmm. they won't take your case if they don't think it's worth taking so right it's gonna be yeah. worth their time so yeah. i feel like yeah they would make a case just for their favor yeah, yeah. Uh, okay <laughs> lawyer talk yeah, it's I'm the gonna, exact I'm opposite of humor, it. right <laughs> i know I'll, it and I'll, I'll put the link in the chat so you guys can okay yeah yeah that does sound interesting though for sure cool i kind of want to check it out um so okay so like what um like okay for me like i with with just trying to get back on humor and stuff mm -hmm. like when i'm con when i used to concept this stuff out i i have just sketchbooks full like you were talking about and and i will look back and there's a couple where i'm like that might work you know yeah um but like, there's occasionally this thing, and I think that's what you were kind of touching on, where it's like, you can't really break it down to like a science, but you know it when you hit it, right? Because you'll kind of come up with a concept, and like, like once again, a lot of the time it's something where it's super obvious, and no one's done it, mm -hmm. and that's where you're like, has no one done this? There's no way this hasn't been done. It's like that's too good to not have been done, you know. Uh -huh. And like for me, those have been the case. Like a, a few little moments like that, you know, where like I'll I'll think of a bit that just should be a shirt, mm -hmm. and it and it hasn't been made. Um, and usually that's like a, a golden moment. But I agree. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll think of a bit and it'll really crack me up, and then I'll show it to a friend, and they'll just be like, "That doesn't make any sense." And generally, I do. Mm -hmm to a friend who has a similar sense of humor you know right yeah if you uh, take it to somebody who's just not gonna get you or like <laughs> yeah it, it's walking that line of like talking to somebody who who gets your humor but isn't just gonna politely laugh at, laugh at everything you know like it's somebody's gonna give you an honest honest uh, response to, to something that you show yeah it's uh, that's actually almost like just a good piece of advice for anything like if you're right yeah for any art that you show right yeah, yeah. it's show it to your mom they're always going to put it in your refrigerator you know but yeah like, <laughs> and there's a lot of friends that'll like placate you and tell you you mm -hmm. know like 
it's almost like somebody before they go to war just being like, yeah, dude, you're totally going to get to <laughs> this war. You can just get out there. It's like, but I, but I have a screwdriver. No, you can go yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> totally yeah. But I think, I think that comes with age and experience. I think yeah. at this stage, you know, when you know who to turn to, you know, for sure. Yeah. But mm. I would definitely recommend like building up those, those go to, you know, people who are going to give you truth. Cause it's like that, that's a resource, man. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. No, for sure. Yeah. You're one of them, man. I, I would, <laughs> I know that I can show you something and you can give me an honest response, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's good to have your, your group of, of uh, creative buddies that, that, uh, that can be your, your uh, private crit crit group, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I think especially when it's pursuing things like out of your own interests, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like that is definitely like something where you usually need another pair of eyes because sometimes your own interest can really blind you. Mm -hmm. um, no, for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, but then there's been times where like, I like, for instance, like the attack of literacy thing I did mm -hmm. long ago, I did, I didn't actually know if that would hit like, I felt really good about it, but I, I had no idea. It, yeah, that was on Threadless, right, for quite a while. Yeah, still up. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's still, awesome. That's really cool. I, I've seen it around. Yeah, that one I remember it got around quite a bit. Yeah, yeah and like that was a, one of those cases where I felt it, the joke was solid. Like it, it definitely touched base with like me. <laughs> <laughs> right, you personally, yeah. Uh -huh. But I was like, how many people are like super in love with like B movie posters and books and classics and want a bunch of the classic authors authors in yeah <laughs> in caricature form yeah like it just seems so niche that that i didn't see a market for it but then like it did exist so it's it it is one of those things had i not just kind of made something that i thought should be made like i, I would have probably lost out on you know a, a, a pretty big win you know mm -hmm. Do you ever find, so I'm gonna use what you're working on right now as an example, like you have to switch gears because the second part of your two stories is so much more lighthearted, it feels like, even though it delves into some deeper things, but especially compared to the first one, do you yeah. find yourself having to like switch gears when you're trying to get in like a more humorous mode? Um, That's that's kind of a weird thing, cause I, and I think maybe you'll have a similar thing because that's a good question you should answer too. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but, uh, but like for me, um, actually, what's weird is I don't think they're that separated. Yeah. Um, like, the weird thing is the people that um, that tend to get into like the more serious stuff that I write tend mm -hmm. to be like comedians. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Which I think is is really fascinating to think about too. Some of the some of the most impressive turns I've seen, especially actors who are traditionally traditionally where their past have been comedic have been some amazing dramatic uh performances too when it comes to like serious topics you know yeah i think there is definitely like a connection between humor and sometimes things that are really serious and dramatic yeah it's weird i um i and you know i mean like you know jeffrey and amanda i think you did stuff mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah too. Mm -hmm. for devastator yeah so we used to do i mean we've had amanda on here but we oh, used cool. to um, yeah, she was, she's like working for Lion Force. I know she's an editor, right? That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, but, uh, like with Devastator, it was this fun thing that I think both Chris and I didn't really do for the money because the money was pretty slim. Right. It was just, it was just like a, an offering of like, we're still being paid. At least yeah. they respect us enough to pay us something. Yeah. yeah. But for sure it was a lot more work than, yeah. If you want to just make money, you could have gone into banking, you know, like that's something yeah. you do out of love and it's amusing everybody, you know, and everybody agrees that it should exist, you know, yeah. Yeah, and I think most people who are contributing to that were just like in love with the comedy of it and like mm -hmm. the fun of it and the kind of experience of being able to kind of just create something you know is good with a whole bunch of people who are in it for that same reason. Right, yeah. But like, um, what's weird is like that whole crowd that they're surrounded by like was like really into my work. Mm -hmm. And yet, like, once again, I, I could go into a crowd of people who are, like, super into, like, dark, depressing things, and they'd be like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's weird is I don't find that I have to, like, switch gears as often, and I do think it's because there's, like, a pretty thin line between the two. Like, I think if you're writing – the kind of stuff I'm trying to write 
I, I, you have to have a bit of a sense of humor about because um, otherwise you'll take it a lot. Like, I think you'll take it too seriously for it to actually come across as serious. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but there's like a certain form of melodrama that's like, uh, like the room would be a really good example. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Like it's, 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 he takes himself so seriously that it becomes funny, I guess. And then. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. It's like a guy that it just doesn't seem like he has any awareness that what he's doing is really melodramatic, you know? Right. Um, so I think if you can have, I don't know. Um, what about you? I mean, you touch on some pretty serious themes in like the Sunless Circus. And stuff. Right. Yeah, that one is it. It's it's the outward outward package looks more kid friendly than it probably is. Yeah. Because it's a uh, it's about people not not achieving their dreams or like losing their parental figures or um, losing their loved one in tragedy. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how how it is like a. A, a tragedy on purpose because it's it's literally sunless, you know, and it's also like an allegory for him being the son of uh, a ringmaster who doesn't realize that he's his son. That's a spoiler a little bit, but it's it's okay. But um, yeah, I think like I, I like couching some of that in in a package that you wouldn't expect that type of story to be in. Um, I, th I feel like a lot of movies that I appreciate have that type of um, subtlety. Yeah, I think I think recently I was as long as I'm watching. I think it was a TED talk with uh, Taika Waititi. Have you seen some of his other works, like uh, Before Thor Ragnarok, like uh, What We Do in Shadows? Yeah, I've seen or, that. Uh, I love that. I haven't seen the series, but I've seen the, the yeah picture. for Boy or I mean even in like Thor and stuff, even in the big blockbuster stuff, you can kind of see hints of the type of. I mean, it's a total tragedy what happens in Thor 3, you know, like he loses everything. Um, but it's still considered probably the most entertaining, entertaining comedic version of, of that, that movie series. Yeah. I think there's something really interesting and kind of fascinating about that type of storytelling because in between, there is all these moments of humor, but it's him dealing with the loss of his parents and his entire world, basically but he's able to do it because he's with friends or he's able to have a, an attitude about it that is um, something really human and relatable. It's like, how do you deal with pain is, is by laughing about it. Yeah. And with other people too. And like, you're not alone in that, you know, everybody shares in pain and everybody shares in laughter. I feel like that's something um, that's really relatable across the board as people and as good, good stories tend to have, tend to have both. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I think, um, so like do you find that it's hard to kind of switch gears from like doing like really highly illustrative kind of realistic stuff to kind of switching to a more like lighthearted kind of cartoony style or for you does that just kind of come naturally because you have a lot of variation in your styles you know oh for my stuff um yeah i feel like it's easier to to tell a joke when it's simple because uh it's it's rare to find like a um, like a super densely made like a Where's Waldo style thing where there's tons of tiny jokes. It's more like yeah, I feel like a, I feel like more of the stuff, the humorous stuff is more simple to do. Um, yeah, and and I think the complicated stuff is it's it's a little bit more difficult to make that into a have a humorous effect because it takes work. And I think like the best jokes are kind of natural. You shouldn't have to explain them, you know. Yeah, yeah, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. But it's nice. It's nice to have that uh, because it, it also, when you're doing lighthearted stuff, or really, oh, I think feel you feel like uh, you have a more sense of a completion. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was saying that that uh, if you can have a simplified style that you can work in, you can have a more sense of completion quicker, and it keeps your motivation going. Because if it, you know, if you're working on something super Sistine Chapel level type things, it's kind of hard to have a sense yeah, of uh, sure. momentum when you're making something. Yeah. So I think it's good to have that sort of. I mean, you were kind of doing that with your your you know, your two stories too, right? Like in between all the crazy cross hatching stuff, you'd have a moment of yeah. more simplified oh. cartooning. Yeah. I bet that for your drawing and for your for your wrist, you know, like it was good for to to, to break that up and, and change it up once in a while. Yeah, I also feel like, um, and I want to hear 
Scott on this too, because Scott, you have like a, a huge variety of, of style you can work in too. So like kind of curious, like do you have to switch mindsets? But like for me, I think one of the cool things, one of the reasons I decided to do that is like, I just don't see that very often in comics mm -hmm. um, where people will kind of switch gears and go from like loose cartooning to like super tight rendering. And like, mm -hmm. I think there's such a wide vocabulary um, and it kind of fits the story better to have the two told in different ways, you know? Cause like yeah, the right. hearted style fits the kind of pause and the, it's like a brief refrain for people to like not get super depressed. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I think, yeah, it was great. Cause especially it was like, if like a kid's telling a story, the yeah. construction of the memory is going to be different than an adult who has much more nuanced, you know, memories or expressions. Yeah. It, I think it totally makes sense. It's like uh, painting in a different color palette, you know? Yeah. And, and I think like, that's something I actually want to see more often. Like I, I actually think like, more of us cartoonists like should be doing that kind of thing like mm -hmm. where we have a, a broad vocabulary mm -hmm. like it's almost like if you could play you know i don't know you think about like rock bands that kind of integrate like other stuff than just the genre they're playing in mm -hmm. it can be really tacky but it can also be really effective to have like a kind of weird like classical music type refrain in like a rock song you know mm -hmm. I think it just helps to mix it up once in a while, just so it kind of refreshes the the input, you know. Yeah, yeah, and also it keeps you challenged because it's yeah. like it, it's a different mindset, like trying to kind of keep loose and be basing things on like shape and simplicity. Um, that can actually be like a heavier challenge sometimes than working like highly realistically, you know. Mm -hmm. um, which is that weird thing, I think. I, I think you just have to do this for a while to kind of really see, to know. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I do remember when I was younger, just looking at like really detailed, heavy stuff and just being like, that's the stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, if I see Mary Blair, I'm still like, ah, oh, like, how? yeah, no, it, it took me a while to really build up that appreciation of simplicity and form. And, and it, it's, it's like deceptively simple, you know, it's like, it's not, it's a, uh, it's not simplistic. It's yeah. like simplified on purpose, you know? And I feel like that, that comes with time and understanding tastes. Um, yeah, I think it's, I didn't really appreciate it. And especially coming from a comic book fan background. Yeah. I wanted the hyper rendered 1000 hatches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I can still appreciate it for sure. I totally do. But yeah, I think my, my breadth of appreciation is especially expanded over time. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. What What about you, Scott? Do you find like it's easy to navigate between like a light kind of humorous style to like a more kind of heavy like rendery uh, style? Like, do you find that your mindset changes, or do you find like it's kind of a similar boat? You know, that's that's interesting. I, I guess I never really thought about it, but um, no, I mean, I don't, I don't really think my like my mood changes or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Cause like, I know the la the, 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 the thing I did for, uh, the anthology was a lot darker than most of my stuff, but I, I don't remember being like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta get into my artist's, you know, mood and kind of like be all emo and all that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You didn't uh, listen to like the, bad music and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, the werewolf and zombies one or werewolf and yeah, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's exciting! Yeah, I'm actually I'm really excited to see what that's going to be like because I've yeah, it's I'm, coming in, I'm coming into a totally fresh. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it should be pretty cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm anxious, but um, I've managed to hold off on reading. I was going to say, Josh, have you read it? Because I'm pretty sure that among the contributors, they get a little sneak peek. I maybe, but yeah, I didn't read yeah. it. I didn't read anything on purpose. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So. I think we all have the ebook. But I haven't even opened it because I'm like, I want it to be a surprise when I get the book. There, there's something nice about having that physical thing, isn't there? Just to, to crack it open for the first time. And yeah, it's almost like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, for me, I mean, I just, I'm the kind of person who likes to create different different things and, and move from one, one to, just to keep it fresh and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Just like when I go see movies, I'm, it's not all, you know, sometimes I want to see an action flick. Sometimes yeah, I, right, know, sometimes right. I, I want to see a comedy sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm not, 
and I, I guess there are times where I'm, I'm like, guess more in the mood to see a certain kind of movie because yeah. of the way I'm feeling or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if, if, if that is the case when I'm drawing, I haven't really like noticed. So mm -hmm. my biggest thing is like how, if you are kind of working in sort of different styles, how to, how do you kind of present that or market it to the people that come to expect something else from you? you know? Here's a good question. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. Answer to that. Do you, Chris? Like, do you well, feel like that there's uh -huh. different markets for the different styles you work in? Yeah, totally. I feel like, uh, yeah, if you're someone that's looking for like a simple cartoon character versus like someone who's looking for, I don't know, like a typographic design, it seems very different. Um, but I think like having both on your or site can help, or whatever you find more enjoyable. Which, which is why I think I have kind of both. The I, I have more my cartooning stuff too, in addition to some of the more complicated things. Yeah, I, I do like to mix it up. It's just like Scott said. It's just like watching a movie. You know, it's I think it's impossible to say like I I only like this type of movie. You know, <laughs> like yeah, it totally depends on your your mood and your taste and and how you're feeling that day. Yeah, I've always had trouble. Like I I think that um, it's getting better with comics, but that, that's always been one thing about the comic community that confuses me is, is like mm -hmm. sort of like in, in books, I guess there are like occasional people who are like, I only read like this kind of book. Uh -huh. Capes and tights only, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I, all yeah. I read are like biographies from uh -huh. like world war two or something. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like there yeah. are those people. There are those people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't feel like it's as prevalent in like literature. I feel like in literature um, and it, it j I shouldn't even say literature, just books in general, like novels. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I think there's more of like an acceptance, like where like a reviewer, will review like an action uh, story, like a, you know, like a born identity type book. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, like they'll, you know, do like Sandra Kissinieros, like the same person, right. totally different topics, weights of story. And like, it'll be reviewed by the same reviewer and kind of like read by a lot of the same readers. Mm -hmm. I think in comics, like there's still a bit of like, Factions like yeah, there's still some lag, yeah, and yeah. It's, slowly, it's slowly changing over time, but I, I feel like it's it's taken a while, you know, because yeah, among from a reviewer point of view, I feel like more of the critics are expected to have that breadth of taste, yeah, to appreciate that. And I feel like it's just taken a little bit longer for indie comics or comics that aren't the big three, you know, to stand out and become kind of recognized as like there's tons of genres here, you know. Yeah, also, it, to be told. yeah, and I mean, like, what Image is doing lately has been really encouraging because it's like it, it does feel like they're kind of doing all genres. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, which I really, really respect. You know, that like they're giving a lot of things a, a good chance to get out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it is a weird thing to me. It's a weird thing whenever I come across people who are like, "I only read this kind of comic," because I'm mm -hmm. like, "Well, you're missing out." I'm like, miss oh, "I know, right?" There's tons, and I, I get it, you know, but there's a high chance that a lot of the ideas that are in some of the freshest stuff came from completely polar differences, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I think it was a common example. I've probably mentioned this before about how uh, John Sweden was talking about how he came up with Firefly, which is like a space Western, right? Mm -hmm. And I really love it, but it wasn't, it was, he, his entry point was reading a book about the Civil War, about mm -hmm. gods and generals, in which I wouldn't have thought that had anything to do with it, but like, oh wait, you're right, that's, Mal is, basically on the losing side and to be t to tell the story of of uh oh after a war and being the being not not the victors yeah. you know yeah can you still hear me yeah but i mean yeah i mean i wouldn't have thought that i would have thought it would have been like a, like a standard western story that inspired him to match that with science fiction but no it's a civil war story matched with and then it became a different genre by itself you know fiction book but something based on u.s history yeah i think that that definitely keeps things keeps your creative juices flowing yeah and i mean you know to me like this is why humor is such an, an interesting topic because like even i'm kind of working on like the more lighthearted style 
thing, but like while I've been working on this, just to show like that it doesn't really, I don't have to be in like a super humory mood. Like I've been listening to like Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Like, <laughs> this is a really heavy book. It's a, right, yeah. But it's like a wormhole I went down because uh -huh. I was talking about this guy who lived in that area during that time and I read his biography and then I was like, oh, it's been forever since I read this thing and I think I'm ready to digest that terrible information again. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it's weird because, you know, this is like right after reading like a weird series based on like shard bearers and stuff by like Brandon Sanderson, which is like uh -huh. weird, nerdy, like sci-fi like yeah. fan book. Right, right. So it's like, I... I I, I just feel like um, it, it's, I don't know. I think people who are specific to a genre like might be missing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it works both ways, just both for creativity and for humor, because I think they work, they work the same way, of connecting two separate things that you wouldn't think have a connection, but the clever moment happens by the sheer fact that you found some connection between them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you go to, do you have any other inspirations? Do you like follow any humor? comic strips or reading books that that uh that you personally enjoy uh for for humor yeah yeah um okay so like i mean i'm obsessed with comedy bang bang like that's oh yeah they're comedy. great yeah yeah uh-huh um so like and i think you and i share this but it's like i really like stand-up a lot and so mm -hmm. i follow a lot of different stand-ups um and then i also like and I just, there's something about Scott Ackerman's humor that really hits home for me. Yeah. Like between two ferns style, just really off kilter, awkward humor. Right. Right. You're just yeah, watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And, and so, uh, so I've been doing, um, are you talking or are you talking REM re me is like one of my favorite podcasts now. Okay. But, I don't know that one, uh -huh. but for like humor comics, um, it, it's, it's, it's weird, but like lately it's mostly been like the humor illustrated humor stuff is all like kids books that I'm reading my son. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's gotta be fun to, to be reading a kid's book and, and you find something entertaining about it too. Yeah. You know, but like, that's great. You know, right? that's like Pixar level quality. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like, I know this was meant for this kid, but I'm enjoying it too. Like that's, that's amazing. Cause it's like that universal type of quality. Yeah. And I'd say like, um, sorry, I, turning my screen share off because yeah, that's cool. wrapped up what I had to do. Um, so, uh, so like the, the, um, uh, oh man, I'm blanking out now. <laughs> yeah. We're reading Benji a book. Yeah. 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 So uh -huh. there's, uh, there's these books by Mo Willems and like, I was obsessed with them before Benji ever uh, like was here. Like I just thought they were so smart and funny. Mm -hmm. They're like these pigeon books, but he has a whole bunch of other books that I'm, I'm really into following uh -huh. I've been dipping into Hilda, which is like, Oh dude, the Netflix one. Yeah. But right. the actual comics that was the comic, right? That was, yeah. the, it probably looks like it, like a comic that I don't know. I don't know who published it. It looks like, uh, I think like, it's British. I think. Really? Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's really great though. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> catching bits and pieces of it with the the nephews when they come and watch it i'm yeah. like oh, i kind of dig this you know <laughs> it's, dude the comic's brilliant too because like the weird thing is the netflix show is so authentic to the actual comic so like yeah. the comic's super like it, it's almost the same pace and storytelling mm -hmm. and um and and it's just like a really fun kind of lighthearted thing so i've been doing that um yeah, that's, that's an interesting one because it almost like certain scenes seem almost too spooky for kids, yeah. but it, it feels like unless they had tried that out with a comic, I have doubts whether they knew that they could do that for a, a kid's show, for that younger bracket, you know? I feel yeah. like if this was traditionally marketed, they'd be like, oh no, kids can't handle ghosts and, and spooky creatures and giants, you know? Yeah. But there's definitely this uh, unique tone to it that I really enjoy that kind of like pushes, kids do like that type of mysterious stuff. and. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they're losing touch with kids because it's like my, my son has gotten really obsessed with watching me play Final Fantasy 1 on an NES emulator. Oh gosh, yeah. And so he's like running around the house, like casting like Fire 2 spells. On That's people. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's um, always fascinating to see what yeah the younger generation still is, is entertained by, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm forgetting, but I think it was Sendak who said that like, kids books are terrible because people uh forget 
like how terrible they were as kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, when he was like where the wild things are, right? Like yeah. he was talking about adults trying to write for kids rather than just like kind of kind of giving it what they get giving them what they want rather than yeah. what they think they want, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about you? Have you have you been reading any uh, comics that are funny that that have kind of inspired you and stuff recently? I mean, I feel like I've been running into like I haven't consistently, but it, like on Instagram, which is kind of says something about how I consume a lot of comics now. <laughs> I've been yeah. finding some of those really quick humor uh, ones. I'm trying to find the name of it. I have to. I might have to buy some time before I find it again, but um. <laughs> there was one. I go. I have to describe it just because I can't find it. But uh, it was with these. It was a bunch of kids. First panel is like a bunch of kids standing around with um, Barney, the purple dinosaur, and he's a T Rex, right? And then one of the kids says, "Stand perfectly still. And he can't see us." And then they do. And then Barney's like, "Kids?" He just. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing a bad job describing it, but <laughs> yeah, it's like just a four-panel comic about. Yeah, um, that type of off kilter, like kind of some some of it gets a little dark too, but um, drawn in a really simple style. I'll, I'll, yeah, let me let me look it up. I have to. I'm doing. I'm not doing it justice by verbally describing a visual, a visual joke here. So uh, while you're looking that up, um, there's there's like there's a New Yorker cartoonist who's in the NCS named Lars Kenneth, and he's actually the president of the chapter I'm in. But um, that guy's stuff is like it will it, it it's proof that like it's it's drawn and it he draws the figures like almost like a um, a Fisher Price egg type okay. character like a really yeah, yeah. template, but it's like his humor is so funny. So there's one where it's like Trump like pointing to to um, to an assistant and being like coughing is for closers. <laughs> like oh that's yeah yeah. <laughs> Um, but like, there's a, the, and then there's, you, I think you've met Lonnie, Lonnie Millsap, like that guy's, um, one panel strips, like one panel strips to me are like super inspiring and intimidating as hell. Right. Cause because, you're telling, you're telling a whole story with one image or one line. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, it's, oh, I found it. It's good bear comics. Oh, sweet. Okay. I'm going to put the link in. I don't know if I. So something's wrong. I was trying to connect to the YouTube page. Here, I might be able to copy yeah. this link from here. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can do that. Right. Right. And then, uh, Scott, like, what, like, have you read any kind of humor comics that have kind of hit you lately? I'm trying to think, and I don't know. I don't know that I have recently. Um, but. Oh, dude! Sorry, somebody in the chats just gave like a big shout out for Comedy Bang Bang. He said, oh, the "Hot Dog," which is the catchphrase. No, I, I've been, but what what I've been I, I've been watching lately is I I got the first three seasons of the Muppet Show, which are the only those are the only ones that are out. There's five seasons, but they've only released the first three. And I now at the I don't know who owns Muppet Show now, but I don't know if they're going to put them out. But anyway, so yeah. I've been watching that, and it's just kind of—it's very interesting because it's like a lot of the acts they had. Some of them are still relevant, like there, you know, there's like you know Steve Martin, and uh -huh. like uh, they had. Uh, um, I was watching one with um, with. Uh, I can I think of his <laughs> Elton John? Uh, no, uh, people are still around, or like you know, obviously he just had the bio pick and everything. But but just the humor. I mean, it's just it's it's all like classic stuff, and it, so much of it still kind of holds up. And it, that stuff, you know, a good a good even like an old like vaudeville joke is still is still fun. Right. So I mean, that kind of stuff. I've been listening to a lot of that lately. But um, but it goes in, in you know, I, I like a lot of different kinds of humor, like. You know, um, Chris had mentioned what we do in the shadows. That stuff. I mean, there's certain mm -hmm. humor that just like has me seriously. There's stuff that I kind of chuckle, and there's stuff that just has me rolling, and that's yeah. stuff that has me rolling. Right. Like, yeah. Stuff like uh -huh. Fly the Concord. Stuff like. Oh yeah. Like I, I watched. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I watched the uh, Lonely Island. Had this. They did this thing, and it was. It was. I don't know. Some kind of a like a 
almost like a rock opera, but it was, or, or more like a rap opera, because they, but it was, it, it was, uh, what's, who are the two uh, baseball players? Jose Canseco and, uh, and who was the one that they were, um, I forgot. I don't know. I'm the, I don't know sports, but back when they were doing the whole, the you know, you know the home run. Oh, the Mar Mark. No. Yeah, oh my Mark McGuire. Mark, Mark McGuire. Okay. I'm not a sports person. So, like, but anyway, so yeah, it's, 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 it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, oh, and right, right. you know, at first I looked at it, and the ratings, you know, it had like a, a two stars, and most almost everything on Netflix, especially if it's an original thing, has like five stars. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I wonder if this is any good, and may you know evidently not everyone thought it was funny but i was just rolling but and i don't even know baseball but just the stuff they were talking about and the, uh -huh. like i mean it was just so ridiculous and it's just this i mean i don't know but that kind of stuff i i just find hilarious so yeah so certain things like that and you know i was the other one that's always recommended to me like is, is rick and morty yeah. and i hadn't watched i haven't watched that because i don't have you know, Hulu or whatever it's on. No way. Yeah. So, so I had, I was up at my dad's cabin and he has, uh, he has, um, you know, Hulu up there. So I watched the first couple episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's something that, and it was funny, but it, it, I don't know if I just hadn't got far enough into it, Yeah. but it was like, I don't know if it's something you kind of have to warm into, but it just yeah. it hit me. Like it did a lot of people. I think if I watched the whole thing, I'm sure it would. But, you know, but there's a like, kind of a, like a stark contrast between something like that to Muppet Show. But, right. yeah, but there's, all this there's stuff, different. you know, but it's it's all good stuff. And it's like, I guess it just kind of depends and, um, you know, kind of what kind of humor you're looking for, what kind of artwork you're doing or whatever. But but to me, and it goes back to uh, maybe I'm in the mood for a comedy, maybe I'm in the mood for a drama or whatever. But I like I like all kinds of different stuff. And. Hopefully that'll kind of, you know, that kind of, I, I, I think, I think the more, the, the, the broader scope you have, the more things that you can draw from, mm -hmm. the more kind of original stuff's going to be. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's I, funny because I, I would have thought that, yeah, you would totally gravitate toward Rick and Morty. No, and I think I, I, I yeah. definitely think I would if I, if I continue to watch the series. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it all could, could be one of those things where everyone recommends it. Right. So it could be overhyped, you know, for sure. But I only yeah. watch, you know, and I only watch two episodes. So mm -hmm. a lot of, I, there's a lot of shows that you kind of have to stick with it and like, oh, man, this is just right. Or also, it also, yeah, could not, yeah, sometimes you just have to be in the right mood for something, yeah. too. I think, like, we were working on, uh, <laughs> we were working at, on Big Mouth. And oh, my gosh, that show is, it's very extreme. Okay. And, uh, I've seen yeah, that. It's very, it could be very uncomfortable, it. yeah, for sure. And yeah. Initially, so many of my uh, coworkers are very uncomfortable watching because we were working on some of the art for it for the uh -huh. next season. Um, but it was, <laughs> gosh, it was, yeah, we would have on and off days. Like, uh, well, I think I was okay with it mostly, but definitely, like, people were, people were very skeptical, like, this is so gross. I don't know if I can handle it. Yes. But then, certain, there's a little bit of heart to it, too. You know, like, yeah. they talk about serious things and they get actually talk about more serious things in a, in a more touching way. But, um, and even then, one of my coworkers was just like, today I'm not into it. I can't watch this. And then tomorrow I find it hilarious, you know? Yeah. So, yeah it's, humor does work that way where you're kind of sometimes in more receptive moods, you know? And uh, it, it, it totally makes sense that, yeah, it, or it could just not be your taste either, you know? So who knows? But yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. Things, things can totally change depending on like your life circumstance and, yeah. and what you had for breakfast, you know? Yeah. I, I tend to think that um, like why I kind of wanted to breach this topic too is just like the the fact that like what's interesting to me like like even sun, like Sunless Circus um, that whole series like it, your brief pitch for it mm -hmm. sounds it, it does sound like the premise for a bit like it's right very, yeah it, I, I, I feel like sometimes I should modify that a little bit like yeah oh no it's it's a tragedy though it's still something you know <laughs> yeah because. Yeah, I feel like my my pitch with it being like, yeah, he lives in the circus, but wants to run away, become an accountant. That gets a laugh, you know. Yeah. Um, but, good. but the comic, I don't know if it has it has like maybe half laughs, you know, like it's yeah. not really. The, but that's why I made the the fourth one, the, yeah. the shorthand, which is all humor, all lighthearted. Yeah. It's very much suitable for kids. Nobody dies. Nobody loses a hand. You know. Yeah. Which happens in the other ones where. <laughs> so, I feel like that was a reaction to. 
um, wanting to see a lighthearted version of what this life would have been like for this robot. Yeah. And, but but in, in the same note, though, because he has such highs, it makes the tragedy hit even harder, too. Yeah. Which is what also, also what I want, you know? I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like you just draw a bigger contrast. And because of that, you get the higher highs and lowest lows. And I think that's that's part of good storytelling, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I actually think that pitch works perfectly because, it, like, to me, I think that's a good example, too, of, like, how something that can start as, like, a funny premise, mm -hmm. like, can kind of um, turn into a kind of heavy or story. Right. Um, yeah, it's, not, it's not like I'm outwardly trying to trick people into yeah. reading something sad, but I feel like at least I'm pretty sure people will be surprised with yeah. the turn that it takes, you know, and it, yeah. and it's, and it fits within the world that I'm building, you know? Yeah, totally agreed. So, um, all right. Well, I, I feel like we've, we've kind of tapped this topic a little bit. Um, what do you think, is there anything you kind of wanted to touch on about like pursuing interests and then like, um, what kind of keeps you motivated to kind of pursue your own artistic in interests on top of, um, you know, like, like what you're doing professionally as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, I think it's important to have that thing that do the thing that you that's you still enjoy, because I feel like you're given. We <laughs> I don't know if we're given talent, but we have some some sort of ability to to make this stuff, uh, and I feel like, yeah, even though I get to work on some cool stuff at work, it doesn't feel like a sense of ownership when I'm working on somebody else's properties. You know. Yeah. Um, I feel like it. It feels nice to be able to, to flex those muscles. Yeah, you know, it's like going out to working out every day, but not doing anything with them, you know. And then it feels like uh, doing doing your own thing is like playing a sport, you know. Like, oh, I can still throw a baseball, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and it's fun. And even if you don't do it well, it's like oh, I can still do this, and I can and, and have fun with it and enjoy the the motion of it. Because yeah. I feel like at work, you get so used to being given an assignment and deliver this, design this, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it still keeps, I think it, you can still have it. It keeps uh, those creative muscles and technical muscles still, so you can still enjoy what you do. Yeah. What, what about you, Scott? Like, what, what keeps you motivated to kind of, like, push out your own stuff based on your own interests while also kind of pursuing, like, the paid work? You know, like, how do, how do you kind of, like, what, what keeps you going on it? What's your, your big motivation on it? Well, I mean... Yeah, a lot of it is just you know doing what you like, but I I I I'd be lying if I didn't say that if if the things I like if I put it out there and people kind of gravitate towards it and that that I find that other people like it too that that is a big motivator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, that's 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 a huge part of it. I I would yeah. think you know. There's a I, I I didn't want to segue too much, but there's a very interesting uh, Victor. Uh, but uh, true story, I was raised in a circus, worked as a clown, and dated a girl who was afraid of clowns. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did not know that about Victor, so that's really yeah, interesting. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I'm always fascinated. Like, once in a, while, once in a long while, I'll, I'll meet, like, people who have experience with actual circus or entertainment or, or yeah. like, oh, you an acrobat. I'm like, oh, what? You know, like, uh, yeah, I, I love hearing those stories because it's, like, something that 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 it's so magical in my head but i'm sure if you're in it it's totally different it's a lot of hard work it's a, you know um that's really interesting yeah yeah i guess kind of, that's very yeah, very ironic too that you were, i wonder if she ever saw pictures of him and or, or if she purposely you hide those like uh yeah that's really funny. <laughs> That's that is fascinating. Um, I like I I uh I was once recording. This is like when I was young and like in a band. We were recording at this guy's studio mm -hmm. that a friend of ours had kind of booked, and so we're like mid recording, and this guy comes in in full clown costume, and uh -huh. I I'm one of those people I don't like I don't respond well to clowns, <laughs> um, and and he came in and was like, got any weed, <laughs> like. And right, you know, oh, yeah. that, like, this guy that's, that's owned, that's more scary here. Yeah, this this guy who owned the recording studio was also a um, a clown, oh, a, like wow. professional clown. So that's how he find. And then he just record bands like as a hobby. Um, that is and the that was, fella. Yeah, that was one of the circus experiences. The only other would be uh, like. I, I did have a friend who used to eat glass and do freak show stuff and, and does it professionally for like a living. That's 
That's so. amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just put uh, I put your link to the Good Bear comics. It's, oh, it's I, I, only, I just read a couple of them, but this one's hilarious. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's, it's Sam's birthday is Saturday night. What do, what do you think I should get her? Well, she's turning four, maybe a stuffed animal or something. And then the, it shows this one girl giving her a little teddy bear, and this guy walks in with this taxidermy bird. Oh, <laughs> and, he says, and he says, damn. Stuffed animal, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that type of, yeah. That's it's, great. It's amazing, yeah. They're only like four panels, but yeah. they're, 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 they're nice setups and deliveries for sure. Yeah. I also put that link in the chat, both – you know, in the in the YouTube chat and the Hangout chat for the, that uh, thing we were talking about earlier about the copywriting thing. But yeah, but yeah. Cool. well, I don't know, Josh. I mean, we're getting close to. I think we're probably past the hour and a half mark. Yeah, yeah. going beyond that. So, right. I, is there anything so, else we want to? I have one question before yeah. we wrap it, um, and then I want Chris to plug all of this cool stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, but like, so the the one question I have, uh, just out of curiosity, is. Have you guys ever considered doing like a fully humor comic, like just a full like maybe a graphic novel that's just complete comedy? Um, have you? Guys I mean, I, I kind of have. I mean, I, I've a uh, oh, it's such a half big, like half finished idea. It's it's something I it came up with at a twenty four hour comic book day um, with with Christina. In a, it's funny. I can't remember when we came up with it. We were in at a. <laughs> one of those novelty restaurants that's inside of a train car. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's, it's a story that takes place inside of a train car. And, you know, so we were kind of very inspired by our environment, but yeah, that one, that one is very much kid friendly. It's mostly silly humor stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll have it finished for a comic con cause that's happening in three weeks. <laughs> and, but uh, I mean, it's all inked and stuff. I just, I just kind of want to have it toned and stuff, but uh, there is one. Yeah, we have, we have some ideas that, especially under the kitten rivet moniker, where we have little, little, very uh, cutesy anthropomorphized animals and kind of like chibified versions of ourselves. Yeah. In a universe that is really silly. There's, there's nothing dramatic about it. It's all, it's all dumb puns and in silly situations with cats and dogs and, and, uh, and yeah, it's. I guess the, the the easiest pitch is it's like Inception, but for kids. Yeah. And it's like silly dreams rather than serious bank heist dream, you know? Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's a good description of Kitten Rivet, too. It's like there's a lot of really, like, just fun, like, animal and, and robot, cat and robot inspired mm -hmm. art and a lot of really bad puns, but, like, bad in the best way. For sure, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you guys should check them out. Um, all right. Oh, we, just, uh, we just made pins recently, actually. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah those so, look great, man. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know pins. You know pins. <laughs> yeah, it's cloison, cloison backing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Pins too. Oh, sweet! Oh, awesome! Yeah. Oh, those look great. Wait, hold them closer, closer. I'm trying to let's yeah. see. Get oh, no. oh, those are reflections. That's awesome. First, I have another one here too. Yeah, I've got a. I've got a. Kind of a cross between a Polaroid camera and a Viewmaster one too, somewhere. But anyway. Oh wait, I think I saw the initial yeah. design for it. I never seen the physical. Yeah, I got design. those on T-shirts and prints and That's all sweet. stuff. So yeah, I love those. Yeah. And then, and then Scott, your your comics a little bit like I mean, there's a lot of humor in your comic. Uh -huh. Have you ever thought of just doing like straight up like like a Monty Python type, just total? total humor <laughs> yeah i mean like originally the first before i think before i even wanted to do like um you know like comic books i wanted to do the whole syndicated route you know i had a comic strip and everything and I, wow yeah That's it was a different thing yeah yeah but it was it was I don't know that it, it was, it basically took place in a mental institution and it was, oh yeah, it was, so it was, it definitely would not really work and it wasn't anything people could relate to. And later on that later, cause if you want, if you read any comic strips, it's, it's all very, it, it most of them focus on a very, they're marketing to a very broad demographic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone is either, you know, they're, it's like family life or something like that. Right. Even if, it, even if it's like something like, 
Hagar the Horrible or BC or something that takes place in a totally different time frame. It's still like it's still like a sitcom type. Yeah, scenario. I think it's, it's like it follows the circulation of papers yeah. and right like and that has to be yeah. pretty so broad. There, I kind of redid it and I basically you know I even though it was still in the kind of in a mental institution it was it I tried to weave in some of the stuff but it just wasn't the best. I, I didn't really know what I was doing back then, but yeah. but yeah, but I've got you know um, I've got tons of different ideas and things like that. And yeah, sometimes yeah, I would definitely like to do some sort of straight up humor thing. Right now, that's right, really not like you know. In I've got so many other things I'm doing. Plus, I think hopefully there's a lot of humor in some of the stuff that I do. Yeah, yeah there totally is, man. Yeah, all over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stories and yeah. stuff. I mean, for me, dialogue's a big thing. I, I like I, I find humor in the way people talk and mm -hmm. just certain things they say and situations and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and there's some of that, like Young and the Dead and things like that. Definitely. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I would I'd love to do like a just crazy straight up you know, humor comic, that would be fun yeah. too. But, but again, that's something that's not something that's come super easy to me. I, it's something I would kind of have to collect gags and. Right. Kind of, and yeah, I feel like you have to kind of yeah. build up a surplus a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Build up the ammo. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've wanted to for a while, but there's so many others. <laughs> so I think it's a similar boat where. Right. You just got to focus on. <laughs> The, the major things yeah like i'm not sure like to me it's like it, it's so funny like um like i said I, I think a lot of people would read like super serious comics and assume everybody making those is very serious and and read comedic comics and assume everybody doing those is really lighthearted and mm -hmm. it's kind of the reverse yeah, often um, we're just you know people are diverse and yeah, Organic, exactly. Three dimensional, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's so hard. It's so weird because I do feel like I've got this kind of like bug for the auto bio stuff, and yet mm -hmm. at the same time, um, I really like. I would love to do just a straight up parody, um, comic. Like, I, I think that would be a lot of fun, especially if it were like, you know, um, one of my one of my favorites is uh, like. A thing that would be fun to riff on would be like those Rex MD comics. Um, I don't know that one. It's it's just like in this in in the Sunday paper, they had this ongoing soap opera uh -huh. about, and it wasn't humorous at all. But it was like really melodramatic about this doctor who just had oh, like yeah. ridiculously attractive like nurses and assistants, and like every patient was like some woman he'd have an affair with. But it was oh. always like. I think he had an eye patch. I mean, it was like straight up soap opera and the yeah. style that it's done in and the, the form formulaic way it's told. I've always thought it would be fun to do a full book, like in that, that, that kind of style. Um, oh, wait, I've seen this. Yeah. It's super authentic. So, yeah. yeah. It's funny because here's the, so this is one of the gags I remember from the strip I was doing. It was basically, I had this character, uh, Orson, who is basically like he, you know, he's got the hockey mask and he's in a straight jacket and he's, but he's like kind of a cartoony looking character. But he's kind mm. of the, basically I, at one point I was kind of de trying to develop as sort of like an idea for an animated series, and mm -hmm. I kind of said that he's basic, he's like like a cross between Jason and Wiley e. Coyote, where you know he's always he's always out to like kill people or whatever, or maim people or do whatever you know, psychopaths do, but uh -huh. it would always backfire on him, you know, so that type of thing. Yeah. But so one of the, one of the things, you know, had, had basically the psychologist or whatever, he's in there and they're examining him and, and they say, I think Orson's doing a lot better. He's, he's actually, you know, starting to, to, you know, get humor and relate to people. Actually, he's right now, he's laughing at the Sunday funnies and, uh -huh. and then, <laughs> And it, then it's, it cut away and he's like reading like, it was like Judge Parker and Mary Worth and those type of, you know, <laughs> opera comics. So it's like, oh, God. Yeah. so yeah. that was kind of, yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. 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 Um, That's pretty good. All right. So we have one question in the chats and then we'll wrap it. So uh, the Mike Hawk in the chats is asking if you feel as though you spend more time coming up with ideas or creating products. Um, mm. I don't know, I feel like probably creating products. 
I would think it's hard because because there's so many ideas that you don't get to execute. Yeah. It usually yeah, takes a right. lot longer to to actually create a product. Yeah. So I would say, I mean, I think there's a lot more. I it's kind of weird because there's a lot more ideas. So you're probably creating a lot more ideas, but it takes a lot more time to create the product. So yeah, it's kind of like. Are you, if you're talking time or if you're talking amounts, I don't know. Energy. It's I don't know who I was listening to recently, um, but uh, they they equated coming up with ideas is like watching the cow make the milk. You know, like you don't actually see the process; it happens right, internally. Right. Yeah. And you just see the results. You just see the results when they're be, they're being you know, milked. But I feel like idea making is kind of like that, you know, if, if you're, you're kind of, you're not always just like sitting at a desk and just kind of like focusing and trying to come up with an idea. Sometimes it just hits you, you know, and sometimes yeah. you need to, you need to come up with that type of stuff and it requires going online and finding scrap and, and trying to go to building a Pinterest board. Like there is a little bit of that too. Yeah. But it, it is hard to quantify that process. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd agree with that too. Cause like, uh, I, I find that, um, for one thing, like sometimes the chase of ideas can be a real distraction from actually making any of those ideas a reality. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I think that um, when I was younger artist, and I'm sure you guys probably had a similar experience, but like it used to be a challenge to find the ideas. Yeah. And so yeah. I have the time, but right. I, I, I do agree. Know. Yeah. It feels like there's a switch. I yeah. feel like now it feels like I have plenty of ideas and now it's just deciding which one of these I should do because it feels like I have less time in my life. Yeah. Whereas before, I mean, I remember taking those, the the capstone level 300 classes yeah. where you can do anything and it was almost not, it, it was difficult. Whereas you'd think that it'd be the easiest, you know, you can do anything. Yeah. Whereas now I would totally know what I want, what I want to do. And I was like, oh great, a, a thing where I'm dedicated and I'm going to get good reviews and I have professionals reviewing it and it's going to make something great. But at the time, my, man, that I struggled to come up yeah. with with like, what is the thing I'm gonna do if I could do anything? Um, yeah. And I feel like that's a that's a, a younger person's problem where I feel like now it's a, I feel like which one of these ideas do I, is worth doing because I only have this much time in my day, you know? Yeah, and I think like the second you kind of start completing a lot of ideas, then it gets really addictive and you're, mm -hmm. and that, it, it's, it's almost like the, um, it's almost like it, yeah, I mean, bring it back to the analogy of like working out, it's like, uh, if you haven't worked out in like a year mm -hmm. and then you work out, it's, it's painful and it's a pain in the butt to get into it. Mm -hmm. The second you're in the flow of it, it's like actually kind of crappy to not. Cause you're like, Oh, like yeah. I missed that. Like, yeah. and now I'm going to have to go through that pain again. But if, right. you definitely up, is, yeah. if you show up and you kind of dedicate to it, then like this weird, karmic kind of delivery comes back so like for me if i'm showing <coughs> and i'm creating then the ideas just come whereas if i don't create then the ideas die yeah it, i definitely it, believe in the idea of momentum you know yeah. for, for just psychologically and, and just creatively having that is, is a good thing yeah like like when i'm wrapped with this book i'm gonna have to need i, I need to have something lined up <laughs> after because i like that could be you know, like I just, I know from being a younger artist that that can be that moment of like, if, if the momentum doesn't continue, then the ideas stop and the muse stop showing up and then you're screwed, you know? So how um, close are you right now? I'm like, uh, like four pages or so. Oh my gosh, four pages. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Like that. Yeah. And then I do all the book design and figure out where to print it. Cause create mm -hmm. space apparently is not around anymore. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you've been working on this for a while. <laughs> Certain places are already, they don't exist anymore. I, I got some recommendations if you need. I can, yeah. Nice. That's good. It's a good place so, to be. I'll probably be bugging you a lot. Because I also, speaking of ideas, um, that's one that I is pretty pressing. I'm going to have to come up with a, I, I'm thinking a title other than quarterly stories for the actual collected book. Mm -hmm. Just calling the publication quarterly stories. So like that's cool, yeah. Um, because I think that's that would be better to kind of convey what it's about. Mm -hmm. So I gotta kind of start spitballing ideas for for yeah. so if you guys uh, I will 
be bothering you. Both. That's cool. No, it's always fun. Yeah, I, I'd be interested because I, I, will, I always kind of wondered the, what the quarterly stories were because I, I know reading the book, it seemed like there were two different stories going on. So I re never really understood what the quarterly stories was. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, initially it was like a banner because the intent was to kind of put out quarterly stories. Mm -hmm. Right, right. right. Um, and I think that could work as like a publication name, but I don't. Right, it does sound more yeah. like a, yeah, yeah. like a, the public a publication house yeah. yeah no it's, it's still it's, a, it's still a fun process you get to like yeah christen this thing as a, <laughs> you know, when you give it a name you know yeah. yeah and i am very close to like where i'm going to be bugging uh, this, both of you guys who are convention experts I'm about sure. <laughs> i don't know about expert but i have experience you know well you guys are more fresh in it <laughs> Um, and I'll be able to finally stop my hiatus and maybe actually show up at conventions. Dude, I know. I mean, stuff like NCS Fest, you know, like you, you're the one that told me about it. That was super cool, man. It was so many great yeah. cartoonists hanging out there. Such a fun venue. You totally need to be there next year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, it's, it just sounded great. Everybody who I knew uh, that went like, mm -hmm. a blast. Yeah. That was, that was a really neat, unique show. So, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. And then no, HB, the old. I know. That's used. That's your old hanging, hanging out place. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris. It's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, I guess we should wrap it because it has been going a while. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks to everybody. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's another question. Hang on a second. Um, our ideas. Yeah, are I just got a lot of good questions, but I don't, I don't think we can get to them all right. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming in though. This is really it's really great to have people in the chat that are engaged. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, I think we are running out of time. Yeah. yeah well, we're we're out of time, but the next uh, maybe the next time we'll we'll touch more on like idea creation because I actually mm -hmm. that's a really rife topic, and we could easily we all talk a lot, so <laughs> we yeah. could easily go another hour on that kind of thing. So thanks to everybody in the chats who showed up. Um, Thanks to Chris for joining us. Um, it's always Thanks fun. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we can work it out once in a while because you keep asking me, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, but this this one worked out for me because we just yeah. finished a con right before yep. <laughs> before two big ones. <laughs> it's a very hard time of year to get any yeah. con because we're we're all hustling. Yeah. Um, dude, well, uh, so okay. So speaking of that, um, we'll just close out uh, saying where to find us. And Chris, do you know your booth number and stuff? Because you might want to mention. I think that. I'm. O ten, O something in uh in small press at San Diego Comic Con, next to to uh, some friends, Just Scope, Justin Hard, Justin Orr. Oh, I like uh, his stuff. Yeah, he's awesome. So yeah. it's always great to be placed next to him. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll have some have some new prints, hopefully done. So yeah, it's always a good goal to to have a new product on the table. But uh, we'll be there all the days. And wait, I have an exclusive print or postcard that'll be given out. So uh, stay tuned on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, kit and rivet. So yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are, you know, at San Diego Comic-Con, which actually I would guess a lot of people who follow us will be, um, go go say hi to Chris. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, so you're on my channel. You know where to find me. Um, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and hit that bell. Um, and then you know, generate a ton of ideas in the meantime. Um, Chris, where can everybody find your stuff um, other than your your booth at the con? Where, <laughs> yeah. where can you find all your cool stuff? Um, like Kit and Rivet, where can I get all those awesome new lapel pins? Yeah, we just, I just today uploaded the, the stuff to Etsy. So if you go to kittenrivet.com, you should find links to the Etsy there. Um, and then online, and just for my regular stuff, it's sketchboy01. Uh, and I post uh, as much as I can there, too. Yeah. Nice. I love it. All right. And then, Scott, uh, let's say Chris and I are working on our comics. And it's I, it's hard to make these assets. I kind of want to just have, like, a font that's pre-built, that's really Ooh. cool and customized. But I have, like, a really limited budget. Um, do you have any suggestions for, for what I could do? Well, even if you have zero budget, you can download the Comic Maker Starter Kit because it's free, and uh, it's got fonts, brushes, templates, word balloons. It's got like, as far as like when I say templates, it's got templates for doing like character designs. It's got templates for scripts. It's got 
you know, like mind maps, all kinds of different guides. I mean, it's just, just tons of stuff. And I mean, there, like literally there are tons of stuff and it is free, but just as another preview, I'm working on a pro version that it's like three times as big. And that one will cost a little bit of money, not a whole lot, but probably what you would pay for just one font. And it's got like, I think it's got like eight fonts and tons of other stuff, but that that's coming soon. But for right now, just to wet your whistle and everything that get the comic maker starter kit, it's free. You can go to circuits.com and pick that up. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do I have to promote? Uh, just there's, there is some new stuff on the website, um, new, new products and things like that, some new prints. And like I said, I got my, I got some enamel pens and everything too. I've got some wood badges and all kinds of cool new stuff. Um, and, Fairly uh, new issue of Young and the Dead too, right? Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. Yes, they, there's a there's a physical and a digital yeah. version of, of, yeah, that's the first issue. <laughs> I've got the, they're all up there. Uh, one through four are all up there. Um, and so, yeah, those are up there. And the other thing I wanted to mention, if anyone is interested, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow. Uh, it's 4th of July. A lot of people have it off in America. Um, so if you, uh, if it'll probably be around nine or 10 Pacific time in the morning. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll be doing, uh, I'll be doing a character design and everything. I'll probably go for about an hour, a little over an hour. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys then. Um, and other than that, uh, this show that we're doing right now is the art casters. And if you want to know when we're going to be on, because like right now, because like I said, tomorrow is a holiday here in the States. Uh, so we're doing it on a Wednesday. Usually we do it on a Thursday, but it can change. And the best day, way to know exactly when we're going to go live is to join the art casters mailing list. And we don't spam you or anything like that. We just usually about 30 minutes ahead of time, we'll put it, we'll send out a, uh, email and let you know where we're going to be with a link and uh, so we can see you guys in the chat and talk to you guys so yeah definitely check that out and there's a link to there's a link to that in the description of this video where you can sign up for that mailing list awesome all right uh, thanks again Chris and we will see everybody next week all right later yeah thank you